Hey everybody, I'm JJ Johnson, and today what I wanted to do is I wanted to give you guys um, a look at five different medical reference type books um, that I recently picked up. I have not had the chance to read all these yet, and honestly, this kind of book, I'm not sure if I'll ever actually be able to read all of them, um, but I think that having these kind of books on hand and uh, at your primary place of residence or copies of them at your bug out location are really important if you think that there is a strong possibility that the grid could collapse and there could be extended periods without uh, emergency medical care available. So, you know, I'm, I'm not an expert. Um, I, I've been trained a little bit in first aid and stuff like that, but you know, it's been many years since I've gone through that training and uh, so I'm not a doctor or anything like that. I just want to let you guys know that. Obviously, most of you guys do know that. But I think after looking through these books and kind of comparing them, I want to point out a couple of you know strengths of each one, and then you guys can make the decision on you know whether or not you want to get them or not. And I'll put the uh, links to them you know down in the description below as well. You can you know probably pick these up off my Amazon store and stuff, or use the link you know through my website to get to the Am to get to Amazon. Either way. Um, Okay, so the first one, uh, some of you guys on YouTube may know uh, Doc Joseph Alton and Amy Alton, Nurse Amy Alton, and they wrote the Survival Medicine Handbook. Now, they have a YouTube channel and a website. I'll throw that uh, link in here as well. And this is a really, really comprehensive book. And what I like about these first, really these first three books is that they are all written with the the mindset, essentially, that you are in a long-term grid down situation or in this, the case of this third one in a remote village area. Um, so that's kind of the mindset that they've taken when they wrote these books. Now they talk about a just a variety of different things. I'll just kind of run down the table of contents real quick for you um, because obviously we can't get into a real in-depth review but Let's see here. It tells a little bit about the authors. Talks about uh, principles of medical preparedness, becoming a medical resource, um, hygiene and sanitation, infections, environmental factors, uh, injuries. You know, like major injuries. Um, then chronic medical problems and other important medical issues, and then medications. And with this book in particular, what I really like about the medication section is that he goes into talking about the antibiotics. Now, and if you guys are aware, um, I'm gonna have a video, uh, or if you're aware about fish antibiotics, then this this section is particularly useful because you can compare um, those fish antibiotics that are available online and over the counter now to these situations that he talks about in the book and use this book as a reference for using those antibiotics. I think that's a really a, a great, great benefit to this book. And in addition to that, there's, you know, there's, there's pictures and, and drawings and diagrams and stuff in here, but it's just got a wealth of information that is all focused on, you know, medical related stuff in a grid down situation. I think it's a great resource and you guys should definitely check that out if you're looking to build your library. The second one here is the Doomsday Book of Medicine by Ralph uh, LaGuardia and another great book with the same type of mindset in it. Um, you know, the way that he breaks his down is uh, he goes into the basics of what you need to know, some essential tools, um, what's your problem, where he kind of just lays out in multiple different chapters, you know, concussions, fainting, headache, eye, ear, nosebleed issues, skin problems, burns, constipation, diarrhea, dehydration, orthopedic injuries, so on and so forth down the line. And as you can see, I mean, this is a, this is a huge book. Um, and then hypertension, high, high blood pressure, Ebola, uh, medical devices for preppers, sterilization, you know, all kinds of stuff like that. And again, just another book that's filled with, you know, lots and lots of information that is focused on grid down medical issues. Now this book here, um, I was turned on to this because I was listening to, I think it was uh, Patriots or Survivors, one of the two by James Wesley Rawls and they're on Audible and um, 
he I like the way he writes his books because he actually lists real resources within the material of a fiction novel and it's kind of cool so if you guys uh, haven't listened to James Wesley Rawls and some of his stuff then I highly recommend that you do it because he, he really thinks things through logically in a very realistic manner and, and in a way that f for most of the issues I think is is pretty spot on on, on things that could happen but anyway, this so he recommended this book, um, Where There Is No Doctor, a village healthcare handbook. And, you know, obviously it was written for, you know, people in third world countries and stuff like that and where they don't have doctors. And so it was just written as a resource for them to be able to, um, to reference this since they didn't have a doctor. So... Um, really a useful guide as well. Talks about, you know, all the various different injuries and um, you know common things that are seen in third world countries which if the United States collapses and we have a, a grid down kind of situation for a long term we will become a third world country so you know uh, resources like this are going to be invaluable now these next two books are uh, not exactly the same they are different and they contain different information but they are kind of similar. So this one is called Emergency War Surgery, the Survivalist Medical Re Desk Reference. And with it, um, this is this is written by a bunch of DOD doctors, um, lieutenant colonels, colonels, majors, you know, they list all the authors up front here. And um, the Department of the Army, I think, is actually the one who, who puts this book out. So it talks about a lot of different stuff, uh, weapons and uh, weapon effects and parachute injuries, medical, levels of medical care, triage, aeromedical evacuation, airway and breathing, hemorrhage control, shock and resuscitation, vascular access, anesthesia, infections, critical care, damage control, surgery, face and neck injuries, ocular injuries, and on and on. Uh, head injuries, thoracic injuries, abdominal injuries. So kind of the way I like this one is it, it's broken up into these sections really, really well. And so you can go right to that chapter to find kind of all the ones that are in that section. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and it just continues on. So extremity fractures, open joint injuries, amputations, injuries to the hands and feet, vascular injuries, burn injuries, environmental injuries, radiological injuries, biological warfare agents, chemical injuries, pediatric care, and caring for enemy prisoners of war. So pretty cool, pretty cool resource there as well. And this is pretty technical reading. <coughs> Excuse me. It is pretty technical reading, but it's got a lot of great information in it. Now this one is it's kind of similar in the fact that it's pretty heavy reading, but I actually really like the way that it's laid out. Now this is the special supra, special operations forces medical handbook and um, also has just a ton of information very similar to this the the book I just did but <clears throat> what I like about it um, better is the way that they lay it out so let me show you here kind of how they how they lay this out so it's got your, your chapter heading with is which is what what issue that you're having to deal with here like whipworm uh, whipworm infection so it gives a short introduction tells you what it is it gives you the subjective symptom then it gives you the objective signs then your assessment and then the plan the treatment plan for it some patient education and then different you know considerations after that so each different injury every place that you go is laid out the same way and I think that is really cool because it's going to help you use this in a more efficient manner if you needed to. So last but not least, um, these are the five reference books that I, that I was talking about. And then kind of as a bonus, I just wanted to real quick mention the, uh, the Pandemic Preparedness Guide. This is not so much a reference manual as it is more just a knowledge uh, book. If you want to learn about pandemics and all that kind of stuff, then this is a great resource to learn more about that. Um, let me just get to the uh, contents here real quick. Did I miss it? Oh, maybe I did. So it, it essentially just goes down a lot of, of different kinds of pandemics, you know, common cold, influenza, pandemic history, H5N1, 
uh, SARS, Ebola, talks about the 1918 flu pandemic, the bird flu. You know, I'm just kind of just getting some of this stuff off here. And, <clears throat> you know, just gives you a good overview of general things about, you know, pandemics and stuff like that. So anyway, guys, that is all I wanted to talk to you ro about real quick. Um, I would be curious to know what you guys have in your preps as far as medical references. Like I said, I took a look at all of my books and stuff and I realized that on medical issues I was kind of short on and so that's why I, I, I got a hold of these and um, I just wanted to share them with you guys as well so that you could also get them. So um, let me know what you guys have that I don't have here in the list in the comments down below. If you're new to the channel then please click subscribe as well. I definitely appreciate that. And as always guys, uh, I certainly appreciate when you click the thumbs up button when you share it with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. And don't forget to live the six P's. Proper prior preparation prevents poor performance. Stay safe guys. One of my biggest time wasters is driving to and from work every day. I can't text. I can't email, it's boring, and it wastes my time. But I started using Audible, listening to audiobooks as I drive. Audible gave me back two hours per day, and I love it. Click the link in the description below to get 30 days free, plus a free audiobook from audible.com when you sign up for the service.